Okay, hello and welcome to um, my Let's Play of Artu Nalico. Um, this is very, very sudden decision, um, because I just kind of found this, but uh, the reason I'm doing this is because I have, a couple of years ago, I found in a bargain bin at GameStop a game called Artu Nalico Koga for the PlayStation 3. And I bought it because it was like 10 bucks. And even though I'm someone who hates bland main characters that you're supposed to have self-insert and someone who hates fan service, I kind of fell in love with that game even though it kind of represents both of these things, like to, a, to an extreme degree. It's, I think it's this Atenego Koga fetishizes more girls than any other anime game I've ever played. There's even one that represents a sweat fetish. It's really weird. But uh, it had a really interesting world, and I really liked characters. And there was this really interesting mechanic where you uh, went into the characters' minds and sorted things out from there. And it had a really cool alchemy thingy crafting mechanic where... Um, you could craft stuff and every thing you crafted would like initiate a small conversation. And since you had three girls, you uh, each of them had another conversation. And so this was like the only game where I deliberately grinded for stuff to craft. So I basically completed the crafting three, two, three, three times to get all the conversations. It was really, really good. And I, like I said, I really liked the world, I liked the concepts there and because it was very musical. Um, yeah, and then I found out that it's like the last game in a trilogy. Uh, but I couldn't find those games, <laughs> these other games, until now. And now I'm going to play them. I've heard they are very different, but I've also heard they are much better. So I'm very interested uh, where this goes. <laughs> I'm really interested to see where this goes. Uh, and I wonder if this will also have this kind of dating sim aspect, because if that's the case, I'm going to do one playthrough for all the, uh, all the different endings. The thing is though, since it was like years ago that I played Koga, I've forgotten most of the things. <laughs> I've forgotten almost all of it. Um, but... What I do remember is, like I said, that I really, really liked it and found it really interesting. So... Oh yeah, right, this was the Floating Islands, right? Long ago it was said that songs carried unusual powers. We believed that songs were the hands of Mother Nature that enveloped the world and they continued to sing without pause. Yeah, I really love the musical aspect of this world, it's really great. Now things have changed, this world everyone has forgotten how to sing. Oh. As if there were ancient words that have been lost forever. I guess this is our fair character. Okay. So I wonder how the combat system works. I've heard it is turn based instead of action y. But I've also heard that it's the same that like focuses on a specific girl that you can choose to assist you. Oh, I'm actually really hyped for this. <laughs> You can't believe how much.
Okay, so this whole thing seems to suggest that there are two uh, girls to choose from. That was also kind of the suggestion in Artinaleko or Koga, but that turned out to not be the case at all because, like, three quarters through the story, you get like another girl thrown in. Um, so, yeah, I wonder. Um, one thing I kind of hope for is that it is not as fetishized as Koga, and I don't mean in the fan service thing. I mean, like, the Koga played really on all, all of the stuff. Like, one of the girls. In Koga, one person has like multiple personalities, one of these girls. That are, they, their looks change. I don't remember the explanation for this, but um, like one of the girls is like this really innocent stereotype for people who like that sort of thing, and then one of her personalities is like this sprash female knight. And uh, then there was this other character who it was very entertaining um, to watch, but it was also really weird because she was. I was going to say borderline, but not borderline, she was a full-on masochist. Like, seriously. When you dive into her mind, it's really kind of disturbing. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I hope this is a little bit toned down here. Or they kind of explore other things. It was pretty interesting to dive into the mind of, of someone who is like, who has this kind of disposition, I think. Uh, I don't know how to explain it. It is atypical for a game to dive into such topics. Just in this speed. Bam! Definitely. Yeah. English. That's right. Okay. So we already had apocalypses behind us. Okay. Oh, this is a Ravatel, right? No. The virus, okay. I think Ravatel was a word that uh, popped up. I think the girls were this. Here can appear in the real world with physical forms and tech people. So this is, these are our enemies. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, rubber tails. That's right. And if I recall correctly, the Ravatels aren't actually really human. They're like kind of machines. Sort of. And they run on fuel. Okay. The river tells are all confined in the tower. In the city down. I'm trying to talk, but I'm also trying to pay attention, so. Okay. That can't be good. Oh. Wow. What's happening? Someone report! 
I, sir. Viruses are spreading at the altar of apostles. Mm hmm. Classification unknown. Rank unknown. We don't have any information, sir. Is it a new type of virus? This shaking is getting serious. Yeah, I'll say. You're flooding the sky, right? Any type of earthquake would be really uh, devastating, I would think. Dead! <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, it's like, normally, in these kind of things, like I know this is like a tech technological society, but kind of evokes this feel like from this screen, that is all fantasy type settings, and you would normally uh, expect someone to go and say, Father, or something like more gravitas, that sounds mysterious, but that is not. I can't uh, complain, like, <laughs> I call my parents, uh, mom and dad too, so, uh, yeah, but still, <laughs> that's a serious situation, dad! Dad, is it really a new type of virus? Their classification and rank are both unknown, in short, we have no data on them. Calling it now, or that is gonna be the final boss or an evil guy because he has evil horns growing out of his armor. Great, I've been waiting to take on an enemy like this. Oh Jesus Christ! Here we go again. Come on, let's do this. I hate these types of protagonists. <laughs> Liner, wait. But the Koga one was one too. Who gave you the order to confront them? Speak up. If we wait around for orders, the viruses will destroy the city. Whose knight are you? Answer me, Liner. I'm Lady Sharelia's knight. Okay. Then you must follow Lady Sharelia's orders. That is the duty of a knight of Alemia. Well then. Liard, what is the situation with the Altar of Apostles? Lady Sharelia! The Altar of Apostles is being overrun by viruses. Well then, what do you suppose we should do, Lady Shuradia? We have no information about these viruses. We're completely in the dark here. Understood. We shall head the investigation. Liner, please come with me. Well then, that's uh, certainly an outfit. Alright. We must deploy now. Liard, please protect the city. Yes, ma'am. Don't worry about a thing, Lady Sharelia. Liner, you won't be much help out there, so just stay out of trouble. <laughs> Son, I know you look like an anime protagonist, but in all honesty, you kind of suck, so just don't do anything. Don't worry, I'll beat these viruses myself, I swear. Hmm. When are you going to grow up? Probably by the end of the story character arcs and all that. Okay. What is this? I've never seen viruses like these before. They're pouring out of the altar of apostles. What's going on here? Well, I guess it's up to us to find it out. Everyone, get ready for battle! Okay, so I'm interested how this is going to work. Okay, let's take them out quickly! Wait, Liner, we must analyze them first. Basic antics of fire devil sick asked Phoenix at me. That's right. The song language. Uh that was also another interesting thing because I think I read that that's actually a language that the developers created for the game. Like, it actually can be learned and read, though I've read it is very simple. It is confirmed. They don't match any previous samples that we've taken. The behavioral pattern and characteristics of these viruses are unknown. I don't know how this battle will go. We will win. But they're viruses, right? The first move always gets them. Or this is the Dark Souls boss and we lose. Lina, wait for Lady Shirelia's orders. Lady Shirelia! This is a dangerous mission, but we must do something. 
I'll start chanting and we'll see what happens. You two back me up. Right. So the concept is similar to Koga. Begin song. Uh-huh. Oh, jeez. Um. Okay, you can't choose anything else, so I guess I'll attack. Well, that did a whole lot of nothing. Synchronization up. Moving on to first level two. Okay, so <laughs> in the in Koga, and I hope this is not the case here, I don't see how it could be the case with the pixel art. Um, in Koga, it was uh, the case that whenever they reached like another level, I try to remember it. Uh, I don't know if it was automatic or if you had to boost them yourself, but they would lose they're close, like more and more. And then the highest level they were basically just in the underwear. This is also where the sweat fetish thing comes on because one of the characters wears this really thick mascot costume and uh, <laughs> once you use her attack she like there's like this big pool of sweat on the ground. It's really fucking weird. Really weird. Nothing much we can do at the moment. Goodbye. It's this. It's transparent. Oh. oh. Let's go. I don't care what they are. Let's go. They passed right through us. Our attacks don't hurt them at all. Yeah, that's what I figured. These viruses, they're We don't stand a chance against them. Yeah. That was evident by the zero damage we took. we must withdraw for now. So is everything voiced? I, I assume the townspeople, when we are going around and talking to them, won't be voiced by the cutscenes at all. That's interesting. What? She's right. We must go back. Wait a second. We're Knights of Alemia. It's our duty to destroy viruses. Dude. It's your duty to protect this girl. And if she says... And she's obviously much more powerful than you. Like, you made 13 damage and she made 4,600. So, if she says, oh no, these things will absolutely murder us, then I think it's time to get out of here. We can't just give up when the going gets tough. Reiner. How dare you speak to Lady Shirelia like that? Look how offended I sound. It's fine, but Liner, we must look at the big picture. If we die here, who will protect our land? She kind of sounds like Tenko from Danganronpa V3. But I understand how you feel, but as a knight, you must make rational decisions. Yeah. We must retreat. That's an order. Alright. Oh. So did it hit us? <sighs> yes, it obviously did. Well, shit, then what should we do? I can't believe it. 
believe it. This has never happened before. You're wrong. This is just like the two disasters from the past. Oh, so you're saying it's just another Armageddon. Whoa. We, we must return to Platina and hold an emergency disaster meeting. Wait, good job so far, Nagi. I like the design. For the most part, I think the costumes are pretty shit. But the characters themselves are pretty good. Shoot! Ayatane! Well, good job there, mate. That was too close. Let's hurry. What about you? I'll try to hold them off. But that's impossible. There's no time to argue. Well, it was nice knowing you. Maybe in death I will learn to change my tone of voice. Jesus Christ, we're just getting knocked around. Ayatani! Ayatani! Liner, this area will soon be occupied as well. We must hurry to Platina. So these boot plates look kind of weird to me. Not this is not a fan service criticism, it's just Are they really that practical? I mean, it seems like they are more constricting than actually helpful. And if someone knocks against them, then I think it would be much more uh, wise to just have a bit more chest room, but uh, have it like solid, not curved with a the breastplate just I don't know how to explain it <laughs> English is not my native language uh, it just looks kind of weird to me are you telling me to abandon Ayatani? but I can't dude he just sacrificed himself for you if you don't run away now then it will be in vain I don't want to leave him either but staying here won't do any good if we return to Platina, we may be able to discover a countermeasure that can save Ayatane and the world. And the world. Liner? Ayatane, hold on! Jesus Christ, Liner. Oh, good, good, good. So I think. So the way he made it sound like was like, Ayatane, hold on, I'll be right there. I think it would have been better if he said, Ayatane, hold on. Like in a more, in a less urgent tone of voice. What? We must retreat. Well then. Ayatane, damn. We are now in danger as well. If they block the road, we won't be able to return to Platina. But you can float, right? That's... <laughs> Ah, uh, well, floating does not mean flying. Lady Shirelia, don't you care about Ayatane? How can you stay so calm? Jesus Christ, Lina, shut the fuck up. I am in charge. I cannot allow my personal feelings to affect my judgment. This is a dangerous situation. High alert. Like, I'm not someone who says, you don't feel feelings. Feelings are for pussies. But, uh, you should put your feelings on hold during a crisis situation and then deal with them later right now shut the fuck up and do what she says Liner, calm down and listen to me we cannot exterminate these viruses through conventional means since they can turn into energy and move throughout the tower instantaneously attacking them is useless then we're completely powerless. There is one way. And that is... Huh? What's that? The legendary crystal. We must use the Him Crystal. The Him Crystal? The one that the legendary Holy Maidens used to save the world? Yes, it bestows unimaginable attack power, and all it needs in return is, so, is for us to get rid of all of our clothes. Mm, that sounds really specific. 
We need the purger kind, specifically. The Hymn Crystal Purger. But that particular crystal is not currently in Platina. Well, fuck. It's in the wings of Horus, a floating continent several thousand stons away. In the lower world. I thought we weren't allowed to go down there. Uh, it's a bit of an emergency situation there, dude. Liner, this is going to be a very dangerous mission. Go down to the wings of Horus and retrieve the purger. Right now, you have so <laughs> the way this she makes it sound is like yeah you have to do this and hurry back as soon as you can but uh, if we go now then everything is like I don't know I don't know what I was going to say uh, take the airship on the other side of this door and head out forget that thought huh? but the airship this is an emergency I grant you special permission to use it. And what about you? I understand. Lady Shirelia. I am in charge. I cannot leave while the viruses are still on a rampage. No, I'm not leaving you behind. Yeah, this time I'm actually on Linus' side. I will be alright. Uh, doubtful. Hurry, we don't have much time. Well, yeah. Liner, here, take this. What did you expect? <laughs> this is... It has a 3D diagram of the purger recorded on it. You should find it helpful. Himbrooch, okay. Lady Shirelia, I'll bring back the purger. I promise. Please, hold on till I get back. <laughs> yeah. Who are you talking to? Oh. What's that? Damn! Is that a monster from the blast line? Um that can't be good. The voice acting is not very good. Damn, this isn't good. The cheese sandwich was half a minute too long on the toaster. Oh, uh, have we already crashed? No, there we are. Oh no! That airship's gonna crash! <laughs> Come on, damn it! Move! Oh well. I would uh, switch it to Japanese, but there are no subtitles uh, in the options at least, and the, yeah, I want to understand what's going on. <laughs> what happened to Orica? Jesus Christ! Like it's the tone, the tone of voice. It's like not appropriate at all. I don't know. We haven't seen her. Unbelievable. Where can she be? Is that Orica? Yeah. Oh yeah, right. Oh, tower and all that. Ah, man, my whole body aches. Ah, let's see. I crashed my airship. So where is it? Yeah, that's a I good don't question. See it here. 
so it must have crashed far away. Either way, I don't like this. Viruses showed up at the altar of apostles, and then I took the airship. Ah, he's testing himself for brain damage, I see. This is the airship. Liner. Oh my god. This is So <laughs> little backstory. I'm an avid visual novel reader. And I really like both the Dank and Romper and the Phoenix Wright series. But both of these series have a real fucking problem with flashbacking to things that happened like half an hour ago. This time once and then get romper the flashback to something that happened like 10 minutes before that i hate unnecessary flashbacks it's time consuming and it's patronizing like fuck you i remember this it just happened the hymn brooch i found it yeah this is the hymn crystal Lady Shirelia, I'll bring it back. I promise. This must be the wings of Horus. I gotta find the airship. I hope it's not too badly damaged. Okay. Our hero is obviously a complete fucking idiot. That's alright. The encounter tutorial is gonna it. Oh, Jesus Christ. It's that kind of tutorial. Okay. Oh, so he remembers that. Um, pressing start, nothing happens. Select. Oh. R2 uh, apparently tells me where I am. Oh, and a little map there in the middle. Okay. L2, nothing. L1, R1. The R's. Square. Circle. Oh. Right. Tech, weight, item, skills. Do I have any skills? Impulse. Moderate physical plus one damage with the shockwave from consumes 10% of my HP. No thanks. That's attack. Okay. So far, so standard. That was so I wonder if the enemies will uh, also give little loose quotes, like in Koga. Because there was something so interesting. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay. Ah. Uh, triangle is menu. System. Yep. Help. How to play. Encounters on fields where enemies can appear and encounter gauge will be fed. Oh, alright. There's still a chance of encounter a new enemy, just cause the blue, don't let your guard down. When the battle ends of defeating an enemy or fleeing, the encounter gauge will decrease, and the guard has zero enemies will longer, no longer appear. Oh, that's interesting. So to each field, if you move to another field or go out of the world, the encounter gauge will recover, you can use this wisely for that. Oh, yeah. Okay. Let's dump us some lore. Ravatels were pitted at the end of the second era and saved mankind when they had come close to extinction from the overflow virus from Tauna. Yep. Go to him, Crystal, and gain hidden power of song is hit the virus. Standard name is the Symphonic Information Virus. Tower control through symphonic lines and the to the tower. The more advanced viruses can use flip-flop conversion technology and can manifest in the real world. Physically harm humans. So the enemy's computer viruses. Liner and the Knights of Olympia are called out when these viruses become. 
Lots of times viruses come out of a place called the Altar of Apostles, since viruses are programmed to harm humans, whether they manifest in the or not, they usually have a lot of people. Yeah, I would guess. I said it would not be compatible with the Guardian of the Tower and take control of them to attack people. Right, like, there are, these, there are multiple towers, like, around the world, from around from Koga, and each of them has, like, this Guardian program. And I remember, I never bought any, but you could, like, buy DLC for Koga to change the personality of the Guardian. It was really fucking weird. Some of people can use the power of songs to shake the land, throw fire, and heal people just by singing. Mm hmm. But such the flaws and only weaknesses that they have a short lifespan, that's right. Yeah. And uh, a little spoiler for Kogar here. Um, I I didn't play it more than once. Because the ending I got the first time was really fucking depressing. Because I chose to get the last girl that came. And during the story for the great evil to be sealed or for the problem to be solved she has to basically poison herself which means that she will only live like a couple of years and the very ending song the very ending is like you the good ending right if you do everything you're supposed to do the good ending with her is her like being your housewife and then it ends with this really depressing note of like, well, it all seems happy but she's going to die soon and god fucking damn it. Um, and what kind of triggered me was that the, um, I would say bad ending, like the other ending, the ending that is not the good ending, with her is that you say no, like the situation is relatively stable right now. Um, so I will take this girl that I have fallen in love with, and think from the character's perspective, um, and we will fly to another island and search there for the cure as long as it is possible. And we will return either if we have found the cure or if the situation becomes so dire that we have to act now. That should have been the good ending. <laughs> And then we should have found something to help her, then come back, and then do it. But no, no. Like, I don't like bad endings for romance stories. I really don't. I like bad endings normally, or bittersweet endings, I have no problem with, but for romance stories, I really fucking hate it. This is always really fucking depressing to me. Since there must have most sorts of life extension agents. Currently, the ten band and another church are not the technology to make this medicine. As long as they belong to either of these two organizations, they can receive the life extension agent for free. So most probably belong to one or the other, but because of this, they have a weakness and are often taken advantage of. Like, fuck. Slavery, basically. As long as they belong to also, Revatel have an install point from which they can install a glass or crystal. By doing this, the effect of song magics are greatly increased. Because this is a painful process, this is commonly known that they only allowed us to fully test to do installation. Yeah. Only because we're from the human humans are so unbalanced that they are always used by humans. Until they revolt and murder everyone. Like, you should never do stuff like that. Um, it's one thing if you, like, subjugate people or use them as slave labor that are, like, weaker than you, because while that is completely despicable, at the very least, you would be smart, because they have no way to really fight back, as long as your numbers are enough. But uh, if you like, like by TV drums, bully the dragon, like if you subjugate mages, then uh, it's only a matter of time before they will burn your house down. <laughs> it's... Uh, not that hard to uh, understand. In song magic battles for Ravatel, this theory is important to change the song. Simple performance would be Ravatel get more motivation and morale from watching the partner fight. That's right. And it's so wrong, or what's everyone's spirit rather than area on both the front lines and Ravatel get a boost in power. 
Okay, crystals have lyrics called hymns that are sung by Revital to control the tower. It's like a memory card. I really like this world, it's really cool. The thoughts of the songs are encrypted in these crystals which only Ravatel can understand. And crystals can craft a different song depending on the Ravatel, but this is because each Ravatel has a different sensibility. Thanks for news, I'm not talking. Uh, hymns. Songs that are recorded on hymn crystals used to control the tower. During the first era when the hymns were actually invented, it is said that there were a couple hundred of the hymns. The difference between hymns and song magic is that this is used in battle. The song that is used in battle is whether it is used to control the tower itself or as a song that takes power from the tower. Hymns are the tower administrator's authoritative rights. Metaphorically speaking, song magic is like electricity in rice hookers and microwaves at home, while hymns are the control switch for the output to a power plant. Postal of Alemia. Those who fought the viruses with the legendary holy band to prevent the end of humanity at the end of the second era are called the Postal of Alemia. Right, that's what we had established already. Virtue over the altar of apostles where viruses most frequently occur, these people created the city of Platina. The current residents of Platina are their descendants who still carry on their task to protect the land from viruses. So, depending on how long this has been going on, everyone there should be completely inbred by now. Hey, it's us. The actual frontman fighting division of the apostles of Alinea. Although they are few in number, each fighter receives special training in order to fight the virus. They are trying to be able to defeat the virus even on its own. They are trained to be able to defeat the virus even on his own. <laughs> They're often found working with Shirelia. Altar of Apostles. Location, uh huh. Standard name for Altar of Apostles is Symphonic Reactor. Apostles. Word in the binary field, which means a condition for viruses to come to form. Elma D. S. The name of the rest is something of the story. Oh, he has his own thing. The most important characteristics about the element DS is that it can freely use flip flop conversion. That's right. Which can change bodily features to the binary field in the robot. In other words, it can change data and the objects and the objects into data. Physical takes and compact intangible form and sets it. Stop it from taking this kind of action. Okay, yeah. That's why we're seeking it. And it's just, yeah. Hymnos. That's right. Hymnos is the language that allows communication with the tower. The sentence begins by stating the emoticon, em, emotion sound, which describes the current feelings, and is followed by the verb subject and adjective. This describes the importance of the song as on emotions. Hymnos has a unique sound lines that look like a hymnos. Has, uni ha has a unique sound, yeah. For some, like, it sounds like a very unmelodic language. <laughs> but. I really like hearing it. I think in Koga they actually sing in hymnos at some point, and it was actually really cool. All song magic, including hymns, uses language to make contact with the tower to power them. Break command to disconnect the link between tower and the program. When this is used, the program being used will be interrupted. Resting for someone. Okay. Alimia Church. Okay, stuff that we don't know. A church that enshrines the trio of Alemia, an organization that uses the Alemia legends as its doctrine. Their priest singing can heal people and make the world peaceful. Well, the first thing is true. They also provide public welfare, oh my god, Republicans must hate it, such as protecting the safety of those who are on the mission to re revive the trio of Alemia. Holy Maiden Candidate. So that's the girl we've met. The church uses this term for Ravatel. In a strict sense, only Ravatel who have obtained the hymn crystal linker, which allows the god to descend the demo called Holy Mates. Okay. So, to the church, all Ravatels that are not Holy Mates are Holy Maiden candidates. Okay, song magic. Imaginary magic. When Ravatel wishes strong enough, the object of imagination will become a physical object in reality. So, they are all green lanterns. From the tower. That's right. Source of life of the tower. It's also, which also has information in the network capability. Symphonic power exists at a very low density in the atmosphere, which is then absorbed by rocks called suns, uh, songstone. This can then be concentrated and turned into a physical form. This fundamental principle was raised to an infinite level with the creation of the tower Artonelico. If I remember correctly, like every game takes place on a different floating island. 
and they all have different towers, but Artonelico Tower is only in the first one. In this third era, it's the only floating urban landform left. This floating continent is about one fifth the size of California. So this takes place in our world? And it's shaped like a bird with its wings spread out, therefore named Wings of Forest. Currently there are many thousands of people living on the Wings of Forest. The airport city of Nemo is considered the capital and Kanlu village is the farthest out. The rest is still under development. Okay. So, I think this will be it for now. I will uh, now go around and grind the gauge empty and yeah I don't think you want to see that so that was that's right that's right Lina on that note see you guys next time